Hello everybody and welcome to the next round of the Galactic War Games! And once again, the humans have surprised us all by getting 5 out of 6 points overall with different types of aircraft. Aircraft we had never seen before, which is amazing how well they can use them considering they don't have wings, of course. And seeing a type of base we thought was an actual forward operating base turned out to be their version of a hospital. The fact that they can use it for multiple things it just is amazing, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely amazing how they've adjusted themselves. And pretty soon we are going to be focusing mostly on to see if they can continue their lead in the Galactic War Games. For those of you not apprised on how this round is going, let me explain exactly what is going to happen. We are now on the opposite side of the planet where the electromagnetics are so severe, in fact, that many ships that land are unable to take off. You actually need to bring in a specialized shielded ship in order to get to the ground, which means most fighters are not going to be able to work. That means most electronics that you bring are completely and totally useless. This includes any type of basic radar systems, ladies and gentlemen. This is something that most species have a lot of difficulty with, except for those that do, in fact, have wings. This also means that all guided munitions will, in fact, fail. They will not be able to lock on. Even if they can and they fire, they will lose their lock. We have tested this over and over and over, ladies and gentlemen. They will not work. Everything must be line of sight, which is going to make sure that everyone has to get up close and personal. However, this means that those that can handle their own craft in this type of area the best will be the ones to come out victorious. The majority of questions are now, will the humans handle this situation? Can they handle this type of situation? As we've seen before, they have some very interesting craft, yet it seems as though they seem to lock in with each other. We have checked and know they were not drones, even though they did work very well together. They are looked at as a very coordinated group. However, since they will no longer be able to use their communications, this is going to be very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Especially when you consider that the craft used by any species in the previous round will not work due to the fact that, again, the computers will malfunction. There is no question about that, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot stress this enough. It has totally changed the way everyone is going to be fighting. It is also of note that similar thrust creators that were used even by the humans will fail as it turns out too much electromagnetic static will cause them to misfire and either fail or explode. Clearly no pilot wants that to happen. And humans seem to have an aversion to killing their own pilots. It is clear that they want to keep theirs alive as possible, as much as possible, which is why there was talk a little bit about shooting at human ejection seats and ejection pods. However, it is well noted that if anyone deliberately does fire upon an ejected pilot, their entire species will be disqualified from the Galactic War Games, and they will have to pay restitution to that species along with their families, Folks, it just is not worth it anymore. After the previous Galactic War Games, we have made sure that that sort of shenanigans will not happen again. As we move down, we are now going to see what's happening on the ground. And we're going to turn towards the humans. And we can see that the humans have totally constructed their own field. Uh, as I notice now, their vessels do need some time to take off. They don't have many vertical takeoff and landing craft, and those that do do not seem to be very quick. It seems as though they have also created multiple ways of taking off. The humans call these runaways. These runaways have been constructed specifically to make sure that they can take off in every direction. A very well constructed idea once you actually look at the way it is done. And we're going to be moving down. Yes, we can get cameras zoomed in close enough to see some of the craft. And they, they, they look odd to me, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know exactly what I'm looking at, but I will try to make sure that everyone who is not able to watch visually can understand what we're seeing. From what I can see, ladies and gentlemen, once again, they have come with three distinct different types of frames. Uh, one of which is very strange. They all have dual 
engines that I can see, uh, it appears that they're using that same wing, that spinning wing that we found that they use on their VTOL craft, and they're using that on the front to create their thrust. But I am unfamiliar with these. The first one has some sort of extra tail on the back that seems to be connected. The other one, I don't know. It seems bulkier, ladies and gentlemen. Even though it does have two engines, it seems to be made of something else. We're trying to zoom in. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure if that is actually metal they are using down there on this one. Uh, it seems to be, again, possibly only one or two pilots in it. Uh, I can't tell from here, but it seems as though humans can be. And yes, we do see one. And yes, there are two inside, side by side. That is a strange way of doing things. Normally, we see humans, if they are riding double, they are one right after the other. Uh, not sure what they're going with this or how these are going to work, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, let's move on to this next one. This next one here seems to be very, very sleek compared to the other ones. A bit longer and does not have the double tail, but the tail is much larger than the other two. I'm not sure why this actually is coming into play, ladies and gentlemen. But each one has their own markings. Uh, two of them have some strange star in a blue circle. And the other one seems to... Wait... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I do believe the humans are playing a joke because those seem to have targets painted on the side. I do appreciate their sense of humor, ladies and gentlemen. I really, really do. And as we pull out, we can see that everything is about to begin. Everybody is now moving towards their craft, and everyone is climbing in. As we go across the human craft, we can see that, yes, in fact, uh, two of the craft are single-seat craft and the other one is a double not sure what that is all about ladies and gentlemen but i'm sure we will find out uh everyone is starting their craft up oh they're on fire oh their their craft are on fire their craft are not on fire what i i don't know that for some reason they seem to be pumping out some sort of smoke ladies and gentlemen i thought the craft were on fire i thought we were going to watch the humans all burn but no they're not burning they just sent out a bit of dark flame almost like smoke what was that ladies and gentlemen i'm not sure exactly what the humans are doing but it seems as though their engines are running it seems as though they start one at a time not both at the same time i don't know what that's all about ladies and gentlemen but we are going to find out and they are now moving themselves into formation everyone seems to be watching the humans the new second favorites right after the capellans and they're moving in. Yes, they are ready. And oh, it seems like perfect timing. There goes the balloon is going up, ladies and gentlemen. The flares have launched and the humans have just throttled up and they are on their way. They're all moving. It seems like they all move simultaneously going down their own one ways. And there they are. They are taking off in groups, ladies and gentlemen. It seems they are in with their own type of craft and up they are in the air. And oh, they actually have it. So their gear goes inside. That's a new one, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't expect to see that and off they go right there into the wild green yonder they go and as everyone gets up i will remind everybody what the mission is for this galactic war games the mission is to strike the other species starting point each one does not have a large base like last time as we know once it is on the ground it cannot be retrieved so no one wants to lose that much equipment so they're able to set up temporary locations the victory is assumed once the other team has either been forced to surrender or the base is completely destroyed. The base defenses will be able to be used, but will need to be personally controlled. As we stated, they cannot use any type of artificial intelligence or guidance systems as they will not work. Due to the limitations, the other species have actually been pulled in to each of them, and they're only 220 kilometers from each other. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to make sure that we are not waiting for a very long time for each of their craft to make it. And But I don't know if we're going to have to wait too long for the humans, but let us look into the other species. As you can see on the multiple screens, we have several of these species there. Most of them have very bulbous airships there that they are basically covered in guns. And they are also armored. However, they use mostly gas to raise themselves up. The engines themselves are a type of zero-point energy generator mostly an ether reactor 
doesn't produce as much energy as they would like, but it will push them along at a fairly good speed. It should be noted, ladies and gentlemen, that also 40% of the species that were in the last round are not participating. This will put them at a significant points difference. However, they do not have the ability to keep up, and one species says, and I quote, I'm not dealing with the humans again. Unquote. Well, I cannot say that I blame them as I see the speed in which the humans are moving. And even though they're not born with wings, they are moving pretty quick. So let us get done with the other species. Those that are born with wings are immediately taking flight. As you can see, many of them have just grabbed their weapons and up to the air they go. Those that uh, don't use any type of engines in their aircraft, which is commonplace for most species, simply use a guideline to pull them up, get them up in the air, and then they use the air itself to glide their way around. There are only two other species that have craft like this, and only two other species that have craft like the humans. Unfortunately, the two that glide are pretty close to the humans. One is next to them, however, one is outside their area. We will see how well they do. There are a few species that actually maneuver their wings up and down on their craft to simulate the flight of avian species, which is almost an insult when you think about it. However, if it works, it works. I couldn't say anything different because guess what? They're in the air and they brought their weapons with them. So let's look back at the humans and it looks like they have fully broken into six large groups. It looks like they're going to try and take on all the opponents at the same time. It seems as they want a full complete victory today. They don't want to take the five out of six. It seems as though they do have that competitive edge that everybody keeps talking about. As we're looking, we see out of the three types of aircraft, two of them have actually got into fighting positions, and one actually is remaining right next to their base. It seems as though they are just idling their engines, and I'm not exactly sure why. They do have a few in the air, but just a few, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure what the humans are thinking, but let's follow one group as they reach their first target, and that is the Tridoshans. The Tradosian airships are very bulbous and they are absolutely covered in weapons, but very light armor as they must keep the weight down. Here comes the humans as in two groups, one's very high and one's low. The high one is coming down. We see them coming down towards them. It's not a very quick diving speed. However, it seems they've lined up and oh, they are spitting fire. They are spitting a lot of fire out the front and they're strafing down each of these Oh, 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 the vessel just went down. One of them is going down. It is going down. Every single one is jumping off. Their crew is actually abandoning ship. It is going, it is actually folding right now. I've never seen this, ladies and gentlemen. Usually they simply drift towards the ground, but this one is going down hard. It's going to smash. They better get free of that before it lands right on top of them. It is not on fire as no one is dumb enough to use hydrogen. However, they're going down, boy, and they're going to squish. Oh, there goes two more. Two more are heading towards the ground. Another one is making an emergency landing, and that is it. There are no more of the bulbous ones in the air, and here come the low-flying aircraft right into the base. It seems as though all the guns were pointing high, and here comes their low ones, and they seem to have almost unmatched speed. They're coming in so fast, I don't think the gunners have seen them yet. They're looking around. They can hear them. They can hear them. I see the guns moving left and right and left and right. Where are they? Oh, geez. They just dropped ordnance, ladies and gentlemen. They have just dropped ordnance right on top of the base. Oh, that is the direct hit, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we see more of the airships going down in the background as each of the base areas is hit. The low-level bombers have actually struck. If we look at this, they, ha they have, in fact, struck the hangar. The hangar is now in pieces, ladies and gentlemen. And the command and control has been destroyed. It is gone, ladies and gentlemen. It has been gone. Not one, but two of their aircraft have actually struck it directly. It is completely gone. The flares have gone up. And they're also coming down from the airships. They have committed themselves. They are done, ladies and gentlemen. They do not want any more pieces of the humans. Let's move to the next base as the humans bug out of the first one. They are already surrendering. 
I never thought I'd see this, ladies and gentlemen. It seems as though the humans have actually gone in and taken out the airships just as they start to lift off. I know it takes them a long time to get those strange rectangular craft into the air, but I didn't think it would take this long, long enough for the humans to come in and drop all sorts of ordnance along with swinging around and firing what seems like I can't even count that many weapons. They're firing so much out of the faces of these fighters, ladies and gentlemen. It is absolutely insane. They've already given up and now the humans have pulled off. Oh, let's go over to the next one. This should be interesting since it is an avian species that is being hit right now. And they're being hit with an incredible amount of fire from those fork-tailed devils as they're swaying themselves in and out and around all those birds that are coming in and out. The birdmen are trying to dive down on the low-flying ones as they drop their ordnance. But they're so fast. Once they drop their ordnance, it seems as though they're much, much faster. We can see here from one of the camera angles as the doors, once they drop their ordnance, immediately close before the ordnance even hits the ground. As soon as they are, there is no wind resistance and they are simply gone, ladies and gentlemen. It seems as though as soon as they lighten up, they get so much faster, which plays in, ladies and gentlemen. We all know the lighter the craft, the faster it moves. But who knew something that doesn't even look like it's made out of metal could move that fast? Looking up towards the sky, I also look to see how many of the avian species are actually falling down, and it seems as though they're they're going down, but they're not actually deceased, ladies and gentlemen. It seems, let's try and get a closer one. Can we get another camera? Get, get, get that camera. Yes, yes, this one. It looks as though they're, they're a hit. That's, that is not blood, ladies and gentlemen. That species does not have bright green blood. Actually, no species does. What are they being struck with? Whatever it is, it seems to hurt because all of them, I can, I can understand what they're saying and I refuse to repeat that type of language on this program. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it seems as though they're using non-lethal fire as they're trying to take down all these air... Oh, it's just absolute madness. Uh, I, I am almost at a loss for words, ladies and gentlemen. As I see more direct hits happening on the third and they are done. They have just signaled. Let's move over to the fourth one. And the, the fourth one has surrendered. They have already surrendered. And they actually have surrendered without taking any hits. It seems as though they sent up their flares as they saw the absolute perfect formation of humans coming in. And they started heading towards the hive. And it seems as though this one species, the Baltic. They didn't want any piece of the humans, so that only leaves a fifth and sixth. Let's see what they have waiting for the humans. Oh, no, they, they're not waiting for the humans. Oh, it looks like they have actually joined forces, and they are moving towards the humans, and they have their wind-powered aircraft right next to them. It seems as though they want to go full in against the humans. It seems the bulky wind drive motors are actually getting them propelled a lot faster than anybody thought. And yes, they are once again covered with weapons, but these may be long, bulky craft, but they are absolutely loaded. And it seems as though the bombers of the humans uh, continue to stay low, continue to stay on targets. The fighters are actually bypassing to take on the base and its defenders. Uh, this is surprising. Hold on. Let, we're going to have to put this on a split screen, ladies and gentlemen, so everybody can see what's going on. It seems as though the bases are both getting struck at the same time. Simultaneously, they are firing into the air, and they are trying to fire all sorts of craziness towards the humans as they fire at those that are way up high. It seems those are way up in the stratosphere don't really care. I don't think they're close enough to be hit. I don't think the bases realize what's coming in, and they're coming in real quick because here comes the little flying aircraft, and oh, it looks like a few guns realize what's going on, but down goes the ordnance. Oh, it is pandemonium down there, ladies and gentlemen. I just saw a few of them, and they only had one piece of ordnance drop out, but it was very, very large. looked about as big as the fuselage itself, but when it struck, it was absolutely devastating. Oh, boy. It wasn't even a direct hit, but I can see folks vacating their base as fast as possible. They do not want any peace, and there's more low-flying humans coming in, and it looks like nothing's going to stop them. Looking even farther up, I can see that those with the forked tails are coming down for their own strafing run, and it seems as though they have focused on taking out the bases. Perhaps the humans have actually forgot that even though if a base surrenders, 
the forces that are in the air are still able to attack. And if they destroy the base, your base, they still get the points, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what the humans were thinking. Leaving their base almost completely undefended. They're in fact, as we're seeing, uh, let's get a top down here. And yes, they are, they are very close. They are very close to the humans. So close that the humans attacking the bases will not be able to retaliate, even though they're already on their way back. Both bases have surrendered. And I don't think the humans can wait. What? What? I don't know what I'm seeing, ladies and gentlemen. The human craft have gone down their own runways. And it seems as though that third type of aircraft is taking off. And th there's... I don't know if it can get up that high, but it, wow, they are climbing fast. I've never, I didn't think they'd be able to fly that fast. I, I don't see a rocket motor. I don't see a jet engine. I don't see anything of that on these craft at all. It seems as though they're just climbing and climbing and climbing so fast. And what is going on? As soon as they take off, they immediately go straight up, straight ballistic, and they climb at such a speed. I've never seen this before. And now they're getting actually above the approaching forces, both of them. And since both bases have surrendered and all the attacking forces are coming back, it seems as though those that are going after the humans, they must take out the human base. And now the aerial battle seems to have started by those that are defending the base. It seems as though they're diving down on them, much more impressive dive speed, and they are opening up with their own weapons, going down through the craft. They're cutting them to pieces. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't know with one simple burst of whatever it is, I don't know why they insist on making their own ammo glow, but the humans have actually gone right through the wings, gone right through the command centers, gone right through the power cells, gone right through the air cells. Everything is being torn apart as they're dip diving and dodging all the way around. It seems as though they're completely coordinated, taking down one after another, focusing on each one, one right after another. The enemies are beginning to drop en masse against the humans. It seems though many of them, as soon as they're hit, are immediately ejecting off or jumping out using their own type of repulsor engines to land on the ground without going for splat. These forces that seem to be left behind by the humans, they are not taking any chances at all. They seem to be making sure that every single one of the ships is being stopped beforehand. If it's faster, it's being targeted. If it's up front, it's being targeted. Some from the top, some from below. I'm watching one right now. It's coming up towards the belly, turning just a little bit, missing the side of the one it is, and it seems as though they have actually broke the back of that airship as it's going down, and yes, the crew is evacuating as fast as possible, and they're getting help. It seems as though their own craft are moving out of the way, and more and more of the ground-based ballistic weapons, which seem to be extremely effective, are tearing into those trying to make it towards the base. They're lining up for their run, but they seem to be taken down by the ground weapons. This could be because they're not changing their direction, not changing their altitude at all. Somehow, the humans are able to actually dial this in so that they can actually have whatever weapons those are explode either on the wings or in the face or inside the fuselage or whatever they're shooting at. They are taking them down so fast, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't even think this was possible. I'm watching two entire aerial fleets go down towards the ground extremely fast. And right now, I am not believing what I'm seeing. As an entire attacking force is currently trying to turn away. They are trying to turn away. Are they trying to run? If they don't want the humans to shoot them, maybe they should actually send out their flares. And just as I say that, ladies and gentlemen, there they are. There they are, spraying their flares. They are done, and the humans immediately are pulling away. Some so close, it seems as though their wings could scrape against the side of the enemy. It is absolutely insane. Their adversaries are done. They are heading back home to lick their wounds. And let's go down to see the humans on the ground. It seems they are, they're cheering. They're, they're holding up their manipulators and slapping them together for some time. And, uh, you know, it looks like some of the humans actually did actually get injured here. Uh, we see some being carried out, and they're immediately put into something with the, yes, we know this symbol with the red lines, one vertical, one horizontal. We know that means they've been hurt, but I don't know if they've actually lost anybody. What I can say is their base is intact, and they have got a complete six out of six victory. 
it seems as though they're also opening up some sort of fluid and uh, sending the top of it way up into the sky as it foams all over them. seems as though they don't care as they're trying to put some sort of carbonated beverage down their throat. Or is that carbonated? I'm not sure what that is, but it seems as though they're enjoying it. They seem to have that strange predatory grin on their face again. Ladies and gentlemen, it sometimes creeps me out when they have that. But it is official at this point. The humans have, in fact, come out on top. We need to actually look to see what's going on with the rest of the scores. One moment. And yes, it is confirmed that they have, in fact, tied in points with the favorites, the Capellans. They are now... a good 11 points for both of them even though at the previous galactic war games they were definitely something to see no one expected the humans someone's born without wings to be able to do such amazing things in the air and now that the games are starting to wind down to a halt for this round once again i am joined by my human counterpart thank you so much for joining me and i just want to know how did humanity come up with such efficient systems so quickly? You only knew about the Galactic War Games for the aerial dominance, uh, what, uh, seven of your Earth months ago? Not even a full solar rotation. How did you come up with this so fast? So fast? What do you mean so fast? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, so fast. I mean, that's not a lot of time to train and and get used and proficient with this how did you get so good so fast oh we uh well we've had this before it's it's not fast we just recommissioned some ancient tech ancient tech as in technology ancient technology oh yes sir we perfected this style of warfare a long time ago on ourselves yet you only used smaller craft and everyone who's looked into your history believed that you would use much larger craft. Larger craft that seemed to be absolutely covered in weapons. And it's they that's what they expected. No need to do that when you have a fleet of mosquitoes that can hit targets faster than those big bruisers. And of course, you've got lightning above them protecting them. Well... That is true, you did have that going in to take out the enemies, but what about your base? Oh, that was just some flying cats we call tigers. They just happen to be very hungry. That is, uh, th that is interesting. Uh, uh, w would you, uh, would we bring such items for the next round of the competitions? That is what everyone wants to know. Are you going to be bringing the same ones? Uh, no, sir. Well, it, no way. Why not? Why wouldn't you bring such effective aircraft for the next round? Oh, that, that's easy. You need to bring the correct equipment to do the right job. And everyone's interested to know, what would that be? Oh, for that one, you're just going to have to see. Just wait and see like everybody else. And yes, we will. I will see you all on the next round of this season of the Galactic War Games!